Let's move on to covariance and correlation coefficient. If you look at these two random variables carefully, the brewery's sales and creamery's sales, you will notice that these two random variables have similar fate. If the summer is hot, then both businesses do very well. But if the summer is cold, then both businesses do poorly. In this sense, these two random variables have similar tendency. Is there any good measure that captures such linkage or similarity or co-movement between two random variables? The answer is yes, there is such a measure, and that's covariance. Let's see how to compute covariance then. To compute covariance, you should compute product of deviations. So this last column is the product of this column, x's deviation from its mean, and this column, y's deviation from its mean. So for example, for state 1, it's 2.4,000 pounds times 1.4,000 pounds equal 3.36,000 pounds squared, and so on. So in this example, when the brewery's sales is higher than its mean, the creamery's sales is also higher than its mean. When the brewery's sales is lower than its mean, it is also the case that the creamery's sales is lower than its mean. So when you compute the product of deviations, it's always a positive number. But in general, it can be also a negative number as well. And that happens when x and y can move in the opposite directions. Like x is very high, but y is very low at the same time. In such situations, the product of deviations can show negative numbers. In this numerical example, it doesn't happen, but in general, sometimes, the product of deviations can show negative numbers together with positive numbers. Once you compute the product of deviations, then to compute covariance of x and y, you should just compute the weighted average of these numbers, product of deviations, using probabilities as weights. So it's probability 0.5 times 3.36 plus probability 0.3 times 0.96 thousand pounds squared and so on. And the covariance is 3.84 thousand pounds squared. Unfortunately, like variance, the notion of covariance doesn't have much intu intuition either. Well, if, it's, if the covariance is positive, you can definitely say that x and y tend to move in the, in the same direction. So if, x is, if one is high, then the other tends to be high as well. And if the covariance shows a negative number, you can certainly say that x and y tend to move in the opposite direction, so that if one is high, then the other tends to be, the other is likely to be low or vice versa, but apart from that, you cannot say much from uh, the covariance. Because of this reason, the more popular measure of co-movement or linkage between two random variables is correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient, which is often denoted by Greek letter rho, it's just the covariance divided by two of the standard deviations. So rho of xy, the correlation coefficient between x and y, is the covariance, which in our example is 3.84 thousand pounds squared, divided by the standard deviation for x, 
which is 2.5 thousand pounds, and the standard deviation of y, which is 1.56 thousand pounds. So if you compute it, it's just 0.984. Correlation coefficient is a more intuitive indicator of co-movement or link between two random variables than covariance is. And the reason is because the correlation coefficient always falls between 1 and minus 1. In our numerical example, the correlation coefficient between x and y was 0.984, which is very close to 1. In such situations, it is said that x and y are highly positively correlated, meaning that they tend to move in the same direction, and that correlation is very strong if the correlation coefficient is close to minus 1, on the other hand, then it is said that x and y are highly negatively correlated, meaning that x and y tend to move in the opposite direction and that correlation is very strong. If the correlation is close to 0, then it is said that x and y have very little correlation or no correlation. Because correlation coefficient always takes a value between 1 and minus 1, you can easily get uh, an idea of how big the correlation is. In contrast, covariance. The size of the covariance really depends on the units of x and y. The covariance, the size of the covariance depends on whether you use meter or centimeter kilometer for x or y. So the size of the covariance doesn't really tell you how large the correlation between x and y is. Okay, for that reason, the correlation coefficient is more popular measure of co-movement between two random variables. Finally, most studies report standard deviations as a measure of risk or variability rather than variance, and they usually report correlation coefficients as a measure of co-movements between random variables rather than covariances. So these academic reports, academic papers, never report variances or covariances. They report standard deviations and correlation coefficients. If you need variances and covariances, you can always recover variances covariances from standard deviations and correlation coefficients. You should know that. Because Remember, standard deviation is just square root of variance, and the variance is square of the standard deviation. So if you know the standard deviation, you can easily recover the variance. Similarly, if the correlation coefficient is reported, you can use this definition of correlation coefficient in the opposite way to recover the covariance. So if you know standard deviations and the correlation coefficient, the covariance is just the product of the correlation coefficient and each of the two standard deviations. In other words, knowing standard deviations and correlation coefficients is equivalent to knowing variances and covariances.